fair seed time had my soul fostered alike by beauty and fear. So Wordsworth writes in book one of the prelude, and it's important for us to note his use of the word fear in this case. Three of the events that he describes from his childhood in prelude book one are not events that we would associate with childhood if we sentimentalize childhood. If we sentimentalize childhood and think, oh, children are pure, children are good, children are innocent, and childhood is generally a time of comfort and tranquility and beauty. That is not the childhood of Wordsworth. Certainly there are, there are great moments of peace and tranquility in his childhood as he describes it in the prelude. But he's also interested in, and indeed I would say more interested in, those moments of childhood that are strange, scary, weird, the idea being that these are the moments that we remember the most and that affect us the most. These are the moments most likely to be, um, as he will say later in the poem, spots of time. Those memories that were especially, that are especially alive. Those times of the past that may have been traumatic, may have been ecstatic, but those moments that we feel in some ways shaped us to be who we are. And as Wordsworth says later in the prelude, when we are dejected, we can remember these moments and they can renovate us. Well, so in the prelude, Wordsworth describes three moments that could qualify as spots of time. The first, he describes how when he was a young boy, he would sometimes sneak out at night um, into the landscape in the Lake District and steal birds that were in the traps of others. And also he would come out at night and he would steal eggs from birds' nests. So in these two, these two moments, Wordsworth is saying, when I transgressed, I felt a kind of, I was heightened. There was an intensity to my feeling and the natural world around me in these moments of transgression seems more alive maybe in a sinister way, maybe in a judgmental way, but the world just seemed to be a scarier, more interesting, more compelling place in these moments of transgression. And this idea of transgression for a child being enlivening is developed in much more detail in the famous boat stealing scene, where Wordsworth describes as a child stealing a boat, taking it out on a lake, and, and then looking at a mountain in the horizon and the mountain seeming to rise up um, and come after him. Uh, he clearly, as a young boy, feels guilt over stealing the boat and as if, it is as if the entire landscape is coming to judge and punish him. Uh, he says this, My boat went heaving through the water like a swan, when from behind that craggy steep, till then the bound of the horizon, a huge cliff, as with voluntary power instinct, upreared its head. I struck and struck again, and growing still in stature, the huge cliff rose up between me and the stars, and still with measured motion, like a living thing, strode after me. With trembling hands, I turned and through the silent waters stole my way back to the cavern of the willow bark. So it's as if the very world, the natural world, takes on human qualities and comes alive as if by some sinister magic and harries him back to the shore where he returns the boat. And Wordsworth says that after this moment, something happened in his mind. He says... After I had seen that spectacle of the mountain rising, following, after I'd seen that spectacle, for many days my brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown modes of being. In my thoughts there was a darkness, call it solitude or blank desertion, no familiar shapes of allery objects, images of trees, of sea or sky, no colors of green fields, but huge and mighty forms that do not live like living men move slowly through the mind by day and with the trouble of my dreams. Basically, his 
way of understanding the world was upset, overturned. And in his mind, he could not recall, he could not dwell upon familiar images like trees. No, these bizarre energies have entered in his mind, unknown modes of being that do not live like living men, and they troubled his mind. This is the fear part. His fair seed time had my soul fostered like by beauty and by fear. And it seems again that, that, that the fears of a child are more likely to generate important qualities than tranquility. It is these three transgressions that open the young Wordsworth to the strangeness of life, the weirdness of life. And for that reason, these transgressions expand his mind, mature his mind, but also they show him the power of his mind because later on he'll realize that the mountain wasn't really coming after me, but I was able to project my fears onto the mountain and it seemed as if it were rising up and following me. In other words, I realized that my mind has a shaping power, that my imagination doesn't simply take in the environment, but can actually create the environment. But it's precisely these moments of strangeness that open up in him the vision of the power of the imagination. So in this regard, Wordsworth's focus on childhood presupposes the value of what I'm going to call a psychology of the sublime. The idea that when we feel uncomfortable, when we feel overwhelmed by boundless, unnameable forces, those are the moments when we, if we are open and courageous, can grow the most. Whereas the moments that are more beautiful, that is comforting or harmonious, are less likely to impact us like these sublime powers.